10 players was asked to drop our top 5 at 140 before getting into our personal legal issues. And apologies to Jeff C, who asked us to drop a matchups video. We just found that one honor list, not sure how it slip passes, but it's a good request. And to Lux on judges, because we was getting ready to drop it right before we ran into our problem. We may do a couple on it, perhaps briefly speaking on it with some related topics, and maybe one on the in-depth history of it. There's a few so we'll be mixing it up with the new requests. But this one's going out to Vontae123, who asked us to drop our top 5 at 140 before our stint, so we're dropping the shit now. And it's our personal top 5 which has nothing to do with Ring Magazine, or no other motherfuckers shit. Too much under the table bullcrap politics with their shit anyway. But before we get this list started. As y'all know. Danny Garcia got stripped and moved to the division he's actually belonged in for quite some time anyway. Garcia's been bullshitting for a while now with Heyman Slick Trick advising, but we've gotta give him some respect for moving to Welder. Let's hope he fucking stays there. Danny's been doing that Koto shit in reverse. Koto's hanging in a division he's too small for, while Garcia hung around in one he was too big for. Though that's a matter of perspective too. Because all that catch weight shit's really a ducking tactic. They're meant for motherfuckers in two different divisions, not in your own fucking division. Two motherfuckers in the same division fighting at a catch weight in that same division's fucking idiotic. If you wanna fight for the money and glory points fine. But not for the fucking title of something you didn't really win the title for. Truth is. If fighters had to fight fighters in their actual natural weight class. Danny should be fighting Koto. Yeah. Another super fight. He sure the fuck's his size. Call that shit Battle of the Puerto Ricans. Showdown in Puerto Rico. Y'all know how promoters love using race and nationality to promote. They'd be like. Only one real Puerto Rican will stand in the end. Though we're not sure that shit would be an even matchup. Because we personally never thought it was right having Danny fight with six toes. I mean he has an extra body part his opponents don't have. That shit ain't fair. One thing you gotta admire about Puerto Ricans though. They're some loyal motherfuckers. When they love their kind it ain't no joke. They ain't dumping you because you lost a fight. Your musical never get old to them. You can be a 110 year old musician play in the Kungas. And little Puerto Rican kids will be boogieing to that shit throwing you kisses. If you died right there on the spot they'd cry a fucking river. Other motherfuckers would tell you to go home old man, or say bout time you fucking died if you keeled over. But not Puerto Ricans. We know. We never miss a Puerto Rican day parade. And if you see the women there you'd know why. But our point's this, because this really ain't no Danny Cotto video, we're just using him as a corresponding example. Because Danny was stripped while we was away, but he wasn't in our top 5 before getting stripped anyway. Due to the same kind of garbage Cotto's doing. So don't think he would've been on that list but isn't because he moved up. Crazy thing about fighters today is they always move up to fight a ton of bums. Few do it to fight the champ right away. This ain't like the old days. Like no one wants to go fight the best right away. They wanna suck every one of the cow's tits before taking on the big one. And that bitch needs a glass. Actually that's a poor example. Cows don't have enough tits for these motherfuckers. But fuck all that for now, and let's get to this top 5. Starting with number 5 on our personal list. We've got Ruslan Provodnikov. We know he's lost 2 of his last 3 and 3 of his last 5, but other than Lucas, Bradley and Algire weren't some blowouts, and Algire was a matter of perspective. Quite a few still thought he won and we wouldn't have had a problem if it went either way, and the Bradley fight was at Welter so he don't count it. He's just the type of fighter you can't count out, and if he ever learns how to stop blocking punches with his fucking face, he'd be a serious force. We don't expect it though. We always wonder what would happen if a trainer like Roger or Sr. got their hands on a fighter like Provodnikov. We doubt they'd mesh, but sometimes chemistry occurs when fans least expect it. Buddy needs another trainer. Someone who'll actually be in his fucking corner during a big fight. Because for Roach it's all about pack. Then comes his new second favorite stepchild. Seems the rest in his gym can go jump off a fucking cliff and die to Roach. He's definitely not Garcia when it comes to his fighters. But Ruslan takes our 5 spot. Because there's a lot of bullshit politics involved, but we'll speak on that when we kick it about judges. At 4. We've got a guy who may very well deserve to be number 1. That'd be this guy. Herrera's a fighter who gets the shaft quite a bit. 
lots of fans feel Laura gets the shaft, and if that's the case, they can definitely say the same for Herrera. Now we say he could very well be number one because Danny held that position. Well Herrera beat him in our book. Then he gets another questionable loss. Papers meant to document the facts of an event, but the facts of what's on paper ain't always fact. And that's a fact. But this list can change quickly depending on who faces who in the coming months, yet we've gotta place him at number four for now. At three, we gotta give it to Peterson. Someone who also faced Garcia. Who won that fights up in the air depending on nothing more than who and what fans like, and most of it had nothing to do with the actual criteria of scoring a fight. Because we've been watching and clearly noticing what types of fans like to pick what types of winners. Fact remains, ain't no one betting their life on anything no matter who Peterson steps in the ring with. But we can tell you who'll claim Peterson loss and who'll say he won in a close fight. And the reason ain't got nothing to do with the ring. And in our second spot at number two. Well this one was up in the air. But we've gotta give it to Lucas. And if you wanna know why. Then all we've gotta say is are you serious? Like do we really need to explain it? And our number one spot at 140 someone we assume y'all already know. We've gotta give this one a Crawford. Crawford and Lucas was a toss up, but until Crawford's knocked off he's the man in our book. So that's what's up. Now there's a lot of fighters at 140 we've still got a eye on, but they've got shit to prove. That includes guys like Postal Khabib and even Broner. But Amir Iman's the man we're really clocking. One of the more multi-dimensional fighters who can do it on the inside and out. He rocks a quick deceptive right that can end a fight without an opponent ever seeing it, goes to the body, can take it to the middle of the ring or the ropes, and put you on the canvas with a power shot or jab. He can be vulnerable, so he's got some shit to work on, but he's worth watching. So that's our top 5. If you've got a different list we're open to hear in it, or about any promising prospects. So just hit us up if you do. And respect to Vontae123. And until our next one. Peace. We're out.